Hey guys, Dr. David Jockers, and we're talking today about some unique exercises that stimulate your brain and really help keep your brain alive. So in general, movement equals life, meaning that the more that we move in a sense, the more we're gonna stimulate neuron, neuro, neuronal growth, or a compound called BDNF, brain-derived neurotropic growth hormone, BDNF. And what that does is that helps stimulate our brain and helps our brain grow and branch out and become more flexible and helps us with cognitive acceleration, meaning the ability to think faster and sharper and to be able to react a lot quicker, right? That's really powerful for our overall life. So movement in general is great. So whether you're walking on a daily basis, uh, going out and maybe doing some cardiovascular activity or resistance training, so doing weightlifting or body weight exercises, all fantastic for the brain. Study after study always shows that regular exercise beats antidepressants when they go head to head for the, for the suppression of depression, meaning that you get over depression faster, your mood is boosted, uh, you think sharper and clearer, it constantly beats that. But today we're gonna really talk about something called neurobics. And neurobics is a really, really powerful way of improving your brain. And basically what it refers to, it's basically non-routine ways of moving your body or thinking that actually stimulate and they have a physiological change in your brain, they create a physiological change in your brain, very powerful. And so with neurobics, what we're looking at doing is unique things. In fact, we look at a neuron, right? So a brain cell, and it's kind of like, think about being in a forest. So you've got, a, you've got trees, tons and tons of trees, and they all have a trunk, and the trunk is the neuron. And at the end of the tree is, of course, all the branches. And so one neuron can have up to 30,000 branches. Isn't that amazing? Now those branches are gonna connect with other tree branches. So the, the tree right next to it has a branch and now those, those branches are connecting and that's actually creating, in a sense, our ability to link thought processes. Now the gap that's right in between the two branches where they connect, right? So I've got a branch from one tree, a branch from the other tree, a little gap right here. That is called a synapse, S-Y-N-A-P-S-E, synapse. They, at Stanford, they looked at Albert Einstein's brain and they thought maybe Albert Einstein has more neurons than everybody else. Maybe that was what allowed him to come up with the theory of relativity, create the atomic bomb, do all these amazing discoveries when it comes to uh, physics and just revolutionize the way that we live today. When they studied his brain, they found he had exactly the amount of neurons as somebody else with the same amount of brain volume that was his age. But what they found that was different was that he had almost twice as much of these little gaps, these little synapses between the branches. And what that meant was that he was able to link higher level thoughts together, meaning that he was able to have this incredible level of cognitive flexibility to be able to bend and think in ways that were unique. And so when we're very linear, I guess you could say, or we don't have a fully developed brain, we think down one plane, right? It's kind of like being really stubborn and not willing to think what we say outside the box. The more developed and mature our brain becomes, the more of these synapses, the more that we're able to think outside the box and link unique ways and ideas together. And there was an amazing book, it was called Think Like Leonardo da Vinci. It's still out there, you can get it, How to Think Like Leonardo da Vinci. And some of the things da Vinci did were very similar to what we're talking about here with neurobics. So he would actually take the time to focus on one sense at a time. So he would take time to do things like just put food in his mouth or put something unique in his mouth. And he would literally take five or 10 minutes and just, in a sense, take in all the different flavors. And then he would write about it, right? All the unique flavors and just really focus on that sense. He would take time to listen. He would sit outside of his, his house and, and listen to all the sounds of nature and try to take in every little sound that he could possibly hear, every bird that was chirping, every insect that was moving, the wind, and he would just focus on that one sense. And by doing that, that was a non-routine way of behaving, and that actually created greater flexibility in his brain, greater what we call synaptic, remember the gap, synaptic density, greater amount of synapses throughout his brain, extremely powerful. So how do we start to implement these things into our life? Well, certainly we could do some of the things that Leonardo da Vinci did. We can also make this really simple. And so neurobics, we break this down and make it as easy as possible. So here are unique and novel things that we're not doing. Possibly using your non-dominant hand. So 
right? In the morning when you get up and you go to brush your teeth, rather than using your dominant hand, which in my case is my right hand, I might use my left hand. That's unique, right? And I may not do that every day, I might just do it once or twice a week, because that way I keep it really unique and novel, and it stimulates my brain to have to learn and grow. So doing something with my non-dominant hand, I might uh, bounce a ball or throw a ball. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm very good with my right arm, not very good with my left arm. But you know what, if I take that ball up and I start playing catch with somebody with my left arm, it's a non-routine uh, activity that's gonna stimulate learning throughout my brain. Some other things that we can do. We can really focus on smell, just like Leonardo da Vinci did. So right here, I've actually got some essential oil. This is peppermint. Peppermint's really good for the brain. It's stimulating and it actually helps the olfactory nerves or the, the nerves that go, the nerve that goes from the, the, the nostrils that takes in smell goes right into the hippocampus, which is the main area where we store memory. So this is why, you know, basically you might smell an apple pie and have a flashback to, you know, Thanksgiving 15 years ago when your mom made the best apple pie ever, right? Smells can actually stimulate memories because they have a direct pathway into the part of our brain that controls short-term and long-term memory. So another thing that we could do though to ramp up overall brain function and synaptic density is we could take different essential oils, right? They have powerful smells. You know, you wanna get something good or organic so you don't have chemicals. You know, right here we've got peppermint. It's a great one. So I sniff that in. It's got a very charming smell to it and it stimulates different regions of our brain. Now what I would recommend just to keep your brain balanced is sniff through each nostril because each nostril is gonna correlate with, with a certain side of the brain. So if we're just focusing on one, we can create, in a sense, a, a dominant side of the brain, right? And that could be a therapy if you have a weak brain, but let it work with a, a trained clinician before you, you start doing that. So instead, try both no, nostrils and then switch up the different types of essential oils so you're smelling in different smells on a regular basis. That is phenomenal to do. Other things, you could do something like a cross crawl exercise where I'm doing this. In fact, what we know is that babies, when they're crawling, when they're doing this motion, right? So left knee up, right arm up, right knee up, left arm up. They're actually developing different regions of the brain and actually crossing, they're getting patterns crossing the brain. So the left and the right hemisphere through something called our corpus callosum, uh, the part of our brain that connects the two hemispheres. And that's very important for brain maturity. So we can do this as an adult as well by doing cross crawl exercises. In fact, you know, what's unique is that children that are put in walkers and never really have the chance to do a lot of crawling and a cross crawl activity, they end up with oftentimes with issues like ADHD, chronic anxiety, the brain isn't fully developed and mature. So crawling is important for children. It's something we can do on a regular basis. We can also do full body movements where we're going back and forth uh, in a sense, kind of like what we call a transverse plane. So I might rotate to this side, rotate to that side. Th those are great exercises to stimulate our brain fantastic things. You know, we know things like puzzles and crossword, uh, crossword puzzles, board games, things like that, really good for stimulating different regions of the brain, connecting things, taking a word, right? And then trying to make another word out of that word stimulates unique regions of our brain. So playing kids games like that can be amazing for, for strengthening, preserving our brain. Again, we could focus on listening to different sounds, right? We could play a game where, you know, we cover an ear, we try to listen to, what, to, to a sound and try to name the sound, and then we can do it on the opposite ear. Very simple things that we can be doing on a regular basis to improve our brain. That's neurobics. And neurobics, again, these unique, non-routine ways of improving our brain can have a powerful overall effect on your ability to be more creative, to think sharper, faster, and ultimately to improve your mood, your memory, and your mindset, and really take your brain to the next level. So for more information on brain exercises and all kinds of health strategies, check us out on our website, drjockers.com. You'll get tons of articles. You can download some free eBooks, recipe books with all kinds of different strategies. And of course, subscribe to us here on YouTube so you get our latest videos and you can start immediately applying these cutting edge strategies to improve your health. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch our videos and to plug in to our education. We appreciate you. And remember, we're all in this together, trying to get healthy, trying to get stronger, trying to live at our highest level.